those videos on the periodic table. You would have seen periodic tables in junior school in the chemistry section of your science. Um, it's a tabular arrangement that takes into account the chemical um, elements atomic number, so its number of protons, its electronic configuration and also reoccurring chemical properties. Um, the section that we're looking at here is that um, elements are a uh, arranged in order of increasing atomic number and we can also look at the periodic table to get some properties. The position of an element in the periodic table is related to its metal or non-metallic character. The understanding that we're going to be looking at, the key idea, is that you need to be able to identify trends in atomic radii, valencies, electronegativities, across periods and down groups of the periodic table. So let's have a think about the periodic table. Um, an element's position is determined by its electron configuration. The, a period is classed as the horizontal rows. It's represented by numerical values, so 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, etc. The period number, that's the number of electron shells that it's occupied. Elements in the same period have the same number of electron shells. So if we have um, elements in period 2, there will be 2 electron shells. Groups, well, they're our vertical columns. They're represented using Roman numerals. And the group number is the number of valence electrons. So if you think back, valence electrons are the number of electrons in the outside shell. And elements in the same group share chemical, similar chemical properties. So here's a periodic table. I would suggest that you get the periodic table that your teacher has given you and you could now do some labels. So we have the period numbers that we were given in the last slide. Um, and so they are our horizontal rows and they are numerical values. So one, two, three, etc., up to seven. So I would recommend that you label them down the side of the periodic table here. If we go back, our group numbers down here, they're our vertical columns and are represented by Roman numerals. That's the number of valence electrons. So here, they've been given as 1a, 2a, etc. I'd like you to put Roman numeral 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and Roman numeral 8 across there. I would suggest that you keep that periodic table out and as we're continuing through the, the video, you can make some notes on it. Trends in our periodic table are what we're going to look at next. As we go down a group, we will see that the atomic radii or the size increases. We see also the metallic character increases, but our electronegativity decreases. When we're moving across a period, so from left to right, our atomic radii or size, now this time it decreases. Non-metallic character increases and our electronegativity increases as well, but we must exclude group 8 for electronegativity. You could write these summaries onto your periodic table. So you can see that we have the atomic number increases as we're going across, radii decreases, and we have an increase here of metallic properties decreasing and an ionisation energy increasing. On the side here, we can see that going down, metallic properties increase, um, atomic radii increases and atomic number increases as well. So you could take some time to put those onto your periodic table. Here's a, um, another diagram that shows atomic radii. So if you have a look here, we've got lithium, here we've got carbon and fluorine, etc. So they're decreasing as they move across the period um, and they are increasing as we're moving down. So I just wanted to add an explanation as to why the atomic radii decreases across a period and increases down a group. So here we're looking at the atomic radii or radius decreasing across a period. The reason this happens is because valence electrons are being added to the same shell or the same energy level. At the same time, the nucleus is increasing in protons. The increase in the nuclear charge attracts the electrons more strongly and therefore pulls them closer to the nucleus and so we see the atomic radii decreasing. So now we want to look at the atomic radii and why that increases going down a group. So if we think about it as we move down a group, the number of energy levels or shells increases. Each subsequent energy level or shell is further away from the nucleus than the last and so therefore the atomic radius is going to increase as you move down the group.
Electronegativity, this is the relative ab ability for an atom to attract valence electrons. Metals, they generally have low electronegativity because they lose their electrons and become positively charged. Nonmetals generally have a high electronegativity because they gain electrons to become negatively charged. How readily an atom loses or gains an electron, that's greatly going to influence its re reactivity. So metals with the lowest electron no, electronegativity and non-metals with the highest electronegativity are going to be our most reactive elements. Here's how we could determine, show on the periodic table the electronegativity trend. Just make sure that it doesn't go into group 8 over here. Next thing that we're going to look at, the valency of an element is a measure of its combining power with another atom. Um, it does this when it's forming chemical compounds or molecules, depending on the type of element. Elements in the same group of the periodic table will have the same valency. And the valency of an element is related to how many electrons are in that outer or valence shell. So I've got a little table here showing you that in group 1, we have a valency of 1, 2 is 2, 3, 4. Now in group 5, we have a valency of 3 because it's easier to gain 3 electrons to make it 8 than it is to lose all 5. Here we've got a valency of 2, again easier to gain 2 electrons than to lose 6, and a valency of 1 because we can just we can gain 1 electron. The noble gases have a valency of 0 as they do not usually combine with any other elements. Here's some numbers that you can now add to your periodic table. So we've got group 1, group 2, heading down. The valency of group 1 is plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. Here we see we get a minus 4 or a plus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1 and 0. So you can add those onto your periodic table as well. Next we've got um, to look at the identifying the position of an atom in the periodic table given its electron configuration. So in one of the videos that we looked at before, we already have found the S, P, D and F blocks in the periodic table. Um, so you can say where they, you can describe their position determined by the subshell that their highest elect energy electron is in. The blocks we're looking at are S, P, D and F and you would recognise this diagram from when we did electron configurations. So here we're looking at elements in group 1. There's one electron in the highest energy shell. So you've got 1s2, 2s1, so one electron. If we look at sodium, it also has one electron in that valence shell. For all group 2 elements, there will be two electrons in that um, highest energy shell and so on. So now we need to look at some examples. Here we have atoms X, Y and Z and we've given you their electron configurations. So if we were to look at what period, group and block does an element belong to, let's have a look at S. So we have 1S2, 2S2, 2P3. So the outer electron shell is our second shell. We can see that here. Um, we can look at the number of electrons in that shell. So we have two here and three, which gives us five electrons. So we end up with the highest energy electron in the 2p shell, and it's in period two, group five in the p block. So that comes from all of the numbers here. We'll look at a second example here. Let's look at Z. So we look at the outer electron shell is our fifth shell because our 5s1. There is one electron in that outer shell and it is an S. So we end up looking at it that it's in period 5, group 1 and the S block. And finally, if we look at Y, we are looking at the highest outer electron shell is actually our 4S. So we need to be a little bit careful. Even though we list them this way, the highest one is 4. The highest energy electron is in the 3D subshell though. And so we say that it's in period 4 and in the D block. So that's some examples for looking at positions on the periodic table uh, when looking at electron configurations. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.